Okay, I'm just going to document what I'm doing real quick here. I've got a Wagon Tech 40 amp DC to DC battery charger. Um, it is uh, water resistant, so it can go underneath the vehicle, uh, which is where all of the uh, electrical is on this uh, Winnebago Solus. So we're going to be just underneath there. And um, I'm replacing the factory battery combiner solenoid with a 250 amp rated uh, single pole double throw relay. So we have, um, if you're familiar with the with the contact numbers on a relay, 30 is is common. 87 is is um, uh, connected when when energized, and 87A is connected when when the relay is not energized. So so currently. Um, um, we have the start battery coming off of the 30 contact. It is currently connected uh, this way. So we have our, our DC to DC input to the, to the charger. So when the vehicle's running, it's passing from the start battery across the contacts here to the input. The input goes into the charger. It then sends energy out to the DC to DC output goes to the um, to the 87 contact which is which is just joined with the house battery wire so that's your path so so we're charging we're charging the house battery now when we let's say we need to jump start the start battery let's say the start battery is really low what we then can do is is your coils here, your 85, 86 contacts, these get ground and, and a, a positive going to a, to a switch, to a jump switch, which we already have in the Winnebago. Um, and so what happens is it takes this contact and moves it to here. So now our DC to DC input doesn't see, doesn't see the start battery. So it's not gonna try to charge anything. So the, so the charging portion stays off except for the solar input, but we don't care about that right now. So it comes over here. Now you have a direct house battery to start battery flow. The charger's not doing anything. Um, and and you're, you're just directly jump starting your battery. Um, just, just like originally with the battery combiner solenoid. Um, the other advantage is if you decided to put this on a toggle switch rather than a momentary switch, you could leave this on while you're parked. Leave the ignition on, leave the radio running, all of those good things. And and you're, it's going to allow energy to flow from your house battery up to your start battery and then power everything that you have your, on your ignition. And in addition to that, if you have the solar hooked up, the solar power can come in and come out the DC to DC output, and you can actually be solar charging both banks at the same time. Um, so I have yet to try that, but theoretically um, you could potentially do that. You could leave your ignition on um, potentially indefinitely if you've got enough solar coming in um, and leave your stereo running, your fans running, whatever you like, lights, auxiliary lights, all that kind of stuff. So. There, there we go. We're gonna, we're gonna try this. Um, that's the, that's the relay, 250 amp uh, single pole double throw relay, and the Wagon Tech uh, 40 amp DC to DC charger. Um, this same setup could be done with, with any uh, DC to DC charger, um, but, but this is what we're using. Okay, let's see how it goes. Okay, now this is what we're looking at after all of this is installed. This is that that Wagon Tech 40 amp DC to DC charger, um, and we're underneath a uh, Winne Winnebago Solus right now, and the original um, battery bank combiner uh, was was here. Um, and this is this is that that 250 amp uh, single pole double throw relay. Um, so this is what it all looks like installed. Um, we've got line coming from the battery 
um, from the lithium house batteries. We've got this that comes over to the, uh, this, this feeds power to the inside. So this is the on off switch that's just inside the slider door. Um, and then, and then joined with those two is our, is our output uh, from our DC to DC charger. So, so, and then the input from the DC to DC charger is here. So, um, so when the car's running, these are connected. You have input, output, and then uh, when you hit the jump start button, then, then it connects these two together, which is our house battery and our vehicle battery. Um, and, and then you get a jump start. Um, this is the factory ground and, and jump start button uh, wires that were already on the original um, battery combiner switch. Uh, so I will show you, there's one, one more thing we did to this to make it behave a little differently since we only want this for jump start now because we have a DC to DC charger handling the alternator charging. So we're gonna run over to the driver's side door here. And this is your battery boost jump start switch. Um, these two are our illumination for the light that, that just backlights the switch. This one here is the common wire, and that, that this is the wire that goes goes back to that back to that uh, relay. And then this wire here, I pulled out of, of pin number four, um, and this is an ignition feed. So originally, this and this connected without the switch uh, being pressed. These two would be connected, and it would just feed an ignition feed back to that that um, battery combiner so that, that they would connect when the vehicle's running and, and charge. Um, we don't want that function now because the DC to DC charger will automatically detect when the alternator is, is spinning and, and will start charging. And so I pulled this out and this, this wire here is, is a uh, 12 volt positive from from the uh, house battery bank um, after the the on off switch that's uh, just inside the sliding door. So you have to turn on the, the house battery bank so that all your lights and everything work in the back. And then and then this is energized. And when you when you press this switch, it connects these two wires. Um, and, and then that turns that relay and, and you get a jump. Um, so, so there you go. I can hear the relay clicking back there. Um, if you wanted to, you could make this, instead of a momentary, you could make it a toggle and you could leave it on um, when you're parked. And if you wanted to just run your stereo and whatever and not run your start battery down, uh, you could do that. You would just have to remember to turn it off uh, when you start the car. Otherwise, you're back to, you know, just combining the two, uh, the two start and the house batteries together without any kind of DC to DC charging, and you're going to overheat your alternator. So anyway, there you go. Pull this wire out, insulate it because it's an, it's a ignition feed, and then this switch just becomes uh, just jump start function only uh on that on that wire back there um once i got it all figured out it was actually pretty simple <laughs> okay good luck